That is the question for the USC Trojans. Uh, eight and a half as well, uh, plus 105 to the over, minus 125 to the under. Um, I just, I, all right, so we've got uh, San Jose State, BYU at Notre Dame is your non-con. They miss Oregon and Washington. You get Utah and UCLA both at home. Um, who, who wants to take first stab at this one? And I guess my my question for the, which, which might be where we determine this over under win total is, how do you grade the Notre Dame game? As a loss. A definite loss? Not I found a- myself... Yeah, I found myself questioning that. And I started like really looking at this USC team. I said, I think they like if Slovis is playing to what we imagine he can be, the best of Keaton Slovis is put together for let's say 10 out of the 12 games. If one of them is up in South Bend, I think USC can win that win that game. I don't I don't think it's a definite loss. I think it's their most likely loss. Like if if you just go percentage wise of outcomes for their games i think that's the one they're most likely to lose but i don't care because i'm still going way over yeah (laughs) okay cool (laughs) because like i I look at the schedule and i understand like there's there's the usc disappointment factor which is obviously going to play a role in the way that the team is viewed on the market there's the fact that clay helton is not a good coach factor which is obviously going to limit the ceiling of this team but like I look at this schedule and I look at the talent that USC has, and yeah, I know we've probably all fallen in this trap a million times already, and it seemingly happens every year. And I'm not going to sit here and say USC is winning the Pac-12 or USC is a playoff contender, but like to get to nine wins, yeah, like what what are the games? Like Notre Dame is the most losable game on this schedule, and that's not even like a 90-10 kind of loss. That's more of a 60-40, 65-35 kind of loss. And I look at the rest of the schedule there are no real, like no chance in hell games. Like you get Utah at home. You've got Arizona state on the road, but it's late in the season. As we just went over, who knows what Arizona state's even going to be at that point. You get Cal on the road. That'll be tough, but you get UCLA at home. You get BYU at home. You get Arizona, Utah, Oregon state, Stanford at home. I just, I I have a, if this team loses four games, then, you know, Clay Hilton's gotta be fired. So I guess I can't lose really. (laughs) <laughs> um, ditto for what a lot of what you said. I think that in the Pac-12, your cross-division draw is huge because you played nine conference games. You're going to mm-hmm. play two-thirds of the other division. And when the two teams that you miss from the other division are Oregon and Washington, that is a favorable draw. I'm I look at I, this also, is an easy over for me as well. Kudos to the Pac-12 for finally figuring out how to schedule <laughs> to make sure that your good teams are good. Give me the under. Whoa. Whoa! Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not buying in. Um, I, I, I think teams are slowly starting to kind of get a better read on what USC is doing on offense. Um, I, I know Slovis was was hurt at times last year, but their passing efficiency throughout the season kind of dropped some. People basically just started dropping, you know, dropping eight and daring to run the football. I don't think this is a very physical football team, um, and I'm just not into buying, you know, overs on these other teams in, in, in this division. Like I, I, you'll, you'll see coming up, there's some other teams that I think are basically uh, on a similar level with, in some cases, you know, easier or, or similar schedules. So for me, it's the under on, on USC. I like how, what games for them are like, no doubt locks that you're very confident, a Clay Hilton coach, USC football team. These are absolutely locks like Arizona at home. I think so. San Jose state. I agree. Stanford at home. Yeah. Yeah. Probably what 85% maybe. Yeah. You know, okay. Oregon state. Yes. I think yeah. so. But like they've, they've screwed up and lost to, to worse opponents than that before at home. BYU. I was going to say yes, but it is the last game of the season. So BYU might have its stuff together by then playoff spot at stake for usc oh, right well exactly uh well, at cal they're, they're screwed if that's the case <laughs> <laughs> um at cal you know it's tough at colorado that you know that, that, that's one of the wild cards that i guess we're, we're going to get to later in the show it's like i colorado obviously exceeded expectations last season for all of us i just i don't know how much stock to put into that last season yet I think this is an eight and four football team. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and take the under. Well, our number's nine, right? Eight, uh, and, eight, half. eight, eight and, and a half. half. Okay, it is eight and a half. All right. 
I yeah. love the over on this one yeah. all day long. Uh, I will give Bud some credit, though, for being the only one of you guys on this. What is we're becoming the fire clay Helton pod, which I'm not comfortable with, but you guys are, but at least Bud's willing to stick to his convictions. But I see, I think this might be, this is my most confident bet in the pack 12. I would say is take the over eight and a half on this one. I think when you go over the games, I, when we talk about the, you guys know the priority I put on quarterbacks and I know the offensive line was a problem in the spring. I feel like that's a position, even though it's, as a Florida State guy at a team that struggled with this for four years now, I feel like it's something you can iron out. You can protect somewhat getting the ball out of his hands quickly. But I still think this team has more talent. How many games of this? And then this is where you guys is where Bud has the conviction to say, hey, well, Clay Helton's going to be that poor. They're going to have better talent on the field every game except for one. That's Notre Dame. Probably anybody yeah. else. Is anybody else close to them? Arizona state? Maybe. No, no, not for top end talent, but has the talent been developed? I think it's developed to the point where they can win these games. They can get their nine wins. Now can All it right. win a national championship? And would no. I pick them as a dark horse for a title or even a playoff spot? No. Cause I think the PAC 12 is going to do PAC 12 things and you're going to have, you know, probably two nine and three teams, maybe one 10 and two team in the, you know, in the conversation at the end of the year. So but I think this team is good enough to win nine games. That's all I need. I think this is one of the safer plays out there. And, and they don't have any Friday night road games after a Saturday huge game against, you know, like one of the top teams in the conference. <laughs> or like 10 straight weeks with no buys. Well, they do have feel that much differently if they were 6-0 and last year and had stamped it and like not had a disappointing loss in the, like at the end of the year. No. Like if they started actually dominating Pac-12 teams on a consistent basis, yes, I would absolutely <laughs> feel differently. 